Hula hoops might seem like simple toys, you know, for kids. But perhaps not surprisingly, there are some people, most of them adults, who are very, very good at hula hooping. They compete for things like time spent hooping, the size of the hoop you're hula hooping. They even compete to see who can hula hoop longest underwater. And then of course, there are people who try to see how many hoops they can keep spinning. The current world record is an astounding 200 hoops. But could it be even higher? Today, we're gonna look at why hula hooping 300 hoops is almost impossible. To find out what it takes, I hooped with the world record holder. Lucky Cole. God, that is exhausting. Talk hoop science with the neuroscientist. But once you have the hoop afloat, and once you've hit the right impulse and the hoop is moving, the hoop now stays in equilibrium because of conservation of angular momentum. And had my hooping abilities digitally mapped. Your hip ankle system was doing its thing, but we saw much more of an involvement of your knee. Hoops are some of the oldest toys on earth, and the ancient Greeks and Egyptians used them for exercise. But the modern hoop, the hula hoop, dates back to the 1950s. They were one of the world's very first big toy fads. America's newest gift to the continent, the hula hoop craze, spreading like wildfire in lands already ravaged by rock and roll. Plastic hoops sold by the millions, because they're easy, right? You just swing your hips and make them go. Naturally, some people got very good at swinging their hips and started keeping track of how many hoops they could keep going. Today, Marawa the Amazing, a performer from Australia, holds the record. The rules are simple. The hoops have to be commercially available, they have to be started by the hooper, and they each have to go around a minimum of three times above the knee to count for the record. And how many hoops is that? 200. That's a lot of hoops. Yeah. That's, a lot, that's a lot. No one ever believes me when I tell them. They're like, oh, yeah. In 2005, a hooper named Karina Oates broke through to triple digits. And I was like, that's amazing. And then I started training to beat 100. The next big jump was in 2009 when Paul Dizzy Hips Blair took the record to 132 hoops. Just blew it out, and yeah. I was like, that's it. We're all gonna stop, retire, go home, <laughs> that's the end. But Marowa thought more hoops might be possible if she approached them a bit differently. I think when I had the initial 100 as my goal, like, I had 100 hoops that were all the same size and all the same weight. One hoop, it's made of plastic, does not weigh that much. But if you're talking about numbers, which we are, you bring enough hoops together, you're talking about a lot of weight. I have to pick up all of those? No, I can pick all these up. <laughs> that's impossible. And that's not even taking into account how much space these things take up. Because remember, you gotta pick them up and get them going all by yourself. So if your arms aren't big enough, you're out of luck. I used to just count a hundred and then I'd spin them and then I was like, Damn it, you know, I can't get my arms around it. And then I remember getting the guidelines and being like, oh, well, if you can have it, you can have this diameter to this diameter. By stacking lighter hoops with varying diameters, Marowa was able to send the record to 160 in 2014. A year later, she stacked an additional 40 hoops on and took the record to its current status, 200 hoops. But doing it was anything but easy. Marowa even injured herself while training. There's a muscle uh -huh. around here, and I pull, I ripped like the insertion out of it at one point, which was, oh my yeah, God. didn't get to train that after that month. Terrible. <laughs> Most people twist their hips to keep a hoop in motion, but Marowa was tearing her body apart, hooping big numbers that way. I worked with one physiotherapist who was like, if you want to fix this, you're going to have to completely relearn how you push the hoop. She had to build a new technique one that could power massive piles of hoops around her torso without injuring herself. So when I hula hoop, I plant my feet, I make my legs really strong, so it's like if someone was trying to push you over, you'd be stuck there, yep. And then I think much more about using my core muscles and pushing every time the hoop hits me in the tummy, I push it away like a laser beam coming out of my belly button. And that is what pushes the hoop around. Oh yeah, I can't. Meryl gave me a lesson in hooping. First, 
with just one hoop. There we go. There we go. Breathe and push. You don't ah, need to... <laughs> still got it. <laughs> then we upped it to four. So these are four regular waist hoops. You want to try and think in your mind just about the blue one, the bottom one. The top ones can skirt around and move like that. But if you keep pushing the blue one hard enough, the rest should stay on top of it. Okay. So just keep. Is that because the blue one's the heaviest? The no, just because it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Stand up straight. Don't look down. All abs. All abs. Abs, right. abs, abs. We ready? Here we go. Yeah. There we go. Ah, so it's so ignore that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have too much trouble with four hoops, but I was still a very long way from 200. I worked my way up to 14 standard hoops. Yeah. Remember, I just need to get three revolutions. <laughs> and then Marowa brought out her record hoops. They're thin, and they come in four different diameters for optimal stacking. This is 30. 30 hoops. I just doubled my hoops. Are these the actual hoops you used? Some of them are, yeah. Nope. Beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Then right. Marowa upped the ante. This is definitely more than 30, and you're not going to tell me how many it is just yet, right? No, I'll tell you afterwards. This was very hard. I was clearly struggling. Close. However many more she had added was testing my core strength. That felt pretty good. Not quite. Third attempt. Ah, that fell apart fast. To the naked eye, that was fine. Yes, all right. To the naked eye, that counts. How many hoops is this? 60. 60 hoops? Yes. 60 hoops. I was going for 50, but you, you smashed it. There we go. Yeah. That's all it takes, yeah. I guess. That's not all it takes. <laughs> Do you want, even though you're exhausted, just to feel what 100 feels like? Absolutely. Just cover my face. <laughs> How do you get all the way underneath? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you did twice as many hoops as this? Yep. That's bonkers. <laughs> wow, that was catastrophic. That was terrible. <laughs> not even one. But 100 hoops is kind of a warm-up for Marowa. She absolutely crushed it. I'm rubbing it in, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you just made 100 of these things look really easy. <laughs> I, know, I know you haven't been training, Yeah. but how many do you think you could just do today, like right now? <laughs> I, I would like to think I can do at least 150, okay. just like casual. But yeah, I'm not super in training mode at the moment, but we could give that a go. and. See? Cool. I might have to get do a costume change. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do a <laughs> costume serious change. Hoop, serious hoop outfits. Give it a shot. Well, I've done my costume change. It's easier to hoop on skin, but when you hoop hoops like this, they pinch. I'm doing it in this because it'll not hurt as much. Marrow stacked up 150 hoops and handled them no problem. That looked good to me. Marowa clearly has a lot of practice and skill when it comes to hooping, but I wanted to know what exactly she's doing and what I'm not. So I took a bunch of hoops to you, Seamer said, where I met up with this guy. And right, there you go. Uh, I'm Ramesh Palasubramaniam. I'm a professor of cognitive and information sciences. I study what's known as a sensory motor neuroscience. I study how uh, the sensory and motor systems in the human brain come together to produce skilled human behaviors. It's actually working Balance quite smart, looks at how class. the brain and the body work together to perform tasks. He's looked at skateboarding and playing music, and yes, hula hooping. So we looked at this very complicated task of how humans control a hula hoop, which is something we can do with great ease, but it's actually, it requires control of pretty much every part of your body. To study hooping, his lab marks up subjects like me with motion capture trackers. This is my crown of shiny balls. Yes. So we're here in the mocap lab now. I have a crown of mocap balls, and I have a bunch of them stuck to my body in various sort of points of interest, anatomical landmarks. And four of them are around the hoop itself, and what these are gonna do is track how the hoop is moving in relation to my body and how different parts of my body are moving in relation to one another. To understand what oh, the body is doing to keep a hoop aloft, you first have to understand what it is that the hoop is doing. 
So first we approached it by looking at the physics of hula hooping itself. So the hula hoop stays afloat by what's called the principle of conservation of angular momentum. So angular momentum is like linear momentum, but it's, it, it's, it's a conserved quantity in physics, which means that any object that it ha which has to remain in a certain state will have to have angular momentum in all of the directions conserved for it to stay afloat. So what we did with hula hooping was we wanted to see how the body is assembled into this complex device that can essentially balance the angular momentum up. What he discovered is that for most hoopers, there's a critical relationship between the ankles, hips, and knees that help keep the hoop spinning around the waist. I'm going to ask you to do, Robbie, is to <laughs> hoop a little bit faster. When you add an extra challenge, like spinning faster. Right, so now you can see he's involving much more of his knee joint. Keep doing what you're doing. Or a mental task. But mentally count backwards in sevens, starting with the number 100. Oh, 93, 86. Things get interesting 79 72 65 50. when you were doing this secondary task we're making you focus on things that are that's not just the biomechanics we're making you we're changing your attention to uh, something else and your cognitive load has gone up and clearly in both those cases we noticed that your hip ankle system is doing its thing, but we saw much more of an involvement of your knee. Got it. So you basically confirmed many things that we've, you know, we've seen in our laboratory studies. Then I tried doing a few hoops the way I had with marijuana. <laughs> ah. So you can see how they kind of fan out, right? And then suddenly the, the energy that I'm putting into the one I'm focusing on isn't necessarily right. timed to some other hoop that's like in a slightly different right. position in this rotation, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that's kind of what separates uh, Marwa from the rest of us. I'm using my body basically from the hips down to manage a few hoops. But Marwa is using her whole body to control a lot of hoops. I asked Ballast Subramanium to break down how she does it. So this is a video of, um, of, of Marwa hula hooping. So it's very clear. So she's got an asymmetric stance with her legs. So one thing that's doing, that she's doing slightly different from our laboratory subjects is that her um, left and her right leg are not you know, positioned in the same spot. The other thing she's doing, as we observed before, is that she's breaking her lower limbs down into this very nice hip ankle strategy. But more importantly, she is actually created a very similar mirror strategy with her upper limb as well. So by using her upper body, Marowa is able to keep as many as 200 hula hoops going at one time. But what's keeping her, or anyone else for that matter, from doing more than that? In Marowa's case, it's really just the size of her arms. And so much of the problem is, you know, once you've packed them is I can't get my arms around them. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I could probably lift 230 maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, if I could get them going, but I can't pick them up. To give you a sense of how heavy these are, I could barely pick up 200 of them. I couldn't stand up while holding them, and trying to get them to spin nearly knocked me over. What would the ideal numbers hula hooper look like? What probably like hooper? probably like an NBA player. Or an elite swimmer, somebody tall with a lot of core strength and long arms who can pick up and spin a giant stack of hoops. Yeah, someone okay. like that. So could we see Marawa's record go up? I, I don't think we've reached a functional, you know, maximum capacity of some kind. I, I would say 250, 300, probably likely. Anything over that, we'll just have to see depending on, you know, what kind of biomechanics that person brings to the table. I'm definitely not gonna set that record. This is only four, but you might. And even if you can't, just remember that what Marawa's doing, is already almost impossible.